Hey guys, hope you're all well out there. So Valimi here, thanks very much for joining me on this video. If you're watching this now, I uh, hope you find this information, um, well, I hope you find the uh, the information about the shared you pretty interesting. I just thought I'd uh, see what you guys think. So we got one in the chat so far. Hey, David, how are you doing, David? You well? Can you hear me okay? Arnie C as well. Hey, Arnie. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, the, the, the one, um, I'm not sure if there's a thumbnail for it, but uh, this is the one that essentially, hey, Robbie. Actually, yeah, Robbie's in, in Ireland as well. I don't know if you've heard this story, but um, there's, a, there's a shipwreck off the coast. Um, oh, perfect. Thanks, Arnie. Off the coast of Donegal, just off Ireland. Apparently, it's refuted to have a substantial amount of gold on. So I don't think anyone's shared or has discussed this yet. So I thought I'd uh, post it quick. Thanks, David. Really appreciate that. Well, um, I got some information. There's a couple of uh, sites. I put the details in the description there um, of the two uh, articles. And then I'm also going to show you exactly where, the, well, where off the coast this uh, the ship is actually. Hey, Robbie, you well? Hey, Arnie, are you, uh, are you both well down that side? No, first time hearing it. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I'll tell you what you can do is later on you can Google it. And um, I think this is the Donegal uh, Daily here. And then there's also the, uh, I think RTE also published something as well. So I'll start off with this one here. Okay, so Operation Launch to Salvage a Billion dollar, uh, billion Euros. Um, I'll put dollars there just for uh, general purposes. It was just easier. Um, for a side of work in the title. So I'd have to physically type euro. Uh, but yeah, a billion, a billion dollars worth uh, or $1.1 billion worth of sunken gold off the Donegal coast. Well, the Donegal uh, coast is up here, just so you guys know. Uh, this is obviously that's Ireland there, and you've got the north there as well. Donegal is on this side here. There's there's Donegal. So off the Donegal coast, probably County Donegal. So uh, this is the County of Donegal on this side here. So uh, that would be um, be along in that sort of area there. I'm not sure how many people are going to join me on this, but um, we'll go through it anyway. So there's Donegal there. That's the uh, the town of Donegal. And then you've got the Donegal coastline here. So getting back to this, it says here, an operation to recover a billion uh, euros worth of gold in the North Atlantic from a sunken sh uh, passenger ship uh, is underway. Recovery um, operation launched to salvage um, a billion euros worth of gold um, off the Donegal coast. Funny how they've repeated that twice. Um, a private recovery operator is currently on an expedition named Operation Neptune to salvage the wreck that lies 500 meters deep, about 130 kilometers off the coast of Con uh, County Donegal. However, the location of the wreck means that the cargo does not have to be transported back to Ireland as it is not the property of the Irish state. So I'm sure the Irish um, revenue are probably keen to uh, to get some money back <laughs> off that if that falls within their sort of um, their uh, sea territory. Um, it says here, however, the location of the wreck, um, sorry, in October 1940, uh, the Royal Mail ship, uh, or uh, Royal, the Royal Mail ship, Empress of Britain, was abandoned after being hit by a Nazi bomber. Sorry, donkeys again. Uh, after being hit by a Nazi bomber, I like the word, when they just say German bomber, but okay, um, and set ablaze. Two, uh, two days later, it was torpedoed by a German U-boat. And funny enough, they've got the exact name, so they must have the uh, the actual uh, information there of that. If successful, the state has been informed that it could be in line for a 75 million euro windfall, but only uh, if legislation is amended to reduce the fines tax liability, as the companies demanded. Under the under the Merchant Shipping uh, Salvage and Wreck Wreck Act of 1993, any cargo landed on our shores acts as a fee of seven and a half percent. So I guess probably if the if the gold were to land in Ireland Bank straight away they'll be hit by the seven and a half percent fee, which is going to be worth seventy five million euros. So it's quite it's quite a bit. 
Uh, just going back to the chat quick here, it says Rob Reynolds is 500 meters deep. Uh, that will smash the ship to pieces uh, getting to the gold. But uh, were there any deaths uh, when it sunk? Well, it says that they that they abandoned it. Uh, but I've also got uh, Wikipedia open, so we're going to check and see um, on some details on the Royal Mail ship. Hey, John, how you doing, John? Welcome. Uh, Coin Collector NIC is here as well. Uh, says WTF. Um, so, um, wonder if they are doing smash and grab style recovery. Uh, well, no one really knows. This was posted at, well, the, the last post is a week ago. Uh, okay, perfect. I want to get back to it. Coin collector says thumbs up. <laughs> right, so, um, uh, Pat, um, obviously nicknamed the Cope, a Gallagher, has been working closely with the company in order to try to make sure it, it, uh, it takes the contents ashore. Um, he has urged the Transport Minister Shane Ross to ensure the necessary amendments to the legislation are made so that the cargo, if found, can be landed in Donegal. Excuse me. He, um, he said, I will be prevailing on the Transport Minister. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, that's the end of the first article there. So we're going to move on to the second one here. This one has a bit more information on it. So there's the ship there. Now it says here, um, provided by the Associate Newspapers Ireland uh, Limited. Um, so that's the that's what the Royal Mail ship uh, Empress of Britain looked like, and it says here it says salvage company wants to wants to haul up a billion euros with the gold from a sunken ship. Uh, the bullion comes from a two thousand ton, um, seven hundred and twenty foot long RMS um, Empress of Britain, a passenger ship that uh, that has been in military service as a troop carrier when it was struck by a German bomber in nineteen forty. Uh, the ship was abandoned and set ablaze. Now lies five hundred meters deep. Uh, 130 kilometers off Donegal, so quite far out. Um, it was the largest passenger liner lost in World War II, um, as it had been estimated that gold to the value of 1 billion euro is on the wreck. Robbie Nash says, no doubt our government idiots will mess it up. <laughs> well, you never know, they might just be putting it on pontoons or something like that if, if, if the government tries to get their way there. A coin collector Nick says, cool news, Lani. Um, John Akouf. <laughs> yeah, so that's quite a bit of gold. I think probably one of the one of the biggest finds um, in a in a long time. And it's obviously they, they don't mention anything about silver. It's all it's all gold apparently. So um, it's quite a substantial amount. Um, it says, however, under the Merchant Shipping Act, which I discussed earlier, um, the cargo land would obviously inhibit a fee of seven and a half percent. But the Atlantic Subsea Adventures, uh, the company behind the mission to locate the missing gold. Um, um, is is bulking at the cost so obviously you know they're a bit concerned at the at the cost involved and it's there's a picture of a fella here provided by the associated newspapers limited ireland um he told rte's news that the local td which is another word for minister here in uh, in ireland and the former junior minister uh funny how they use local td and then former junior minister uh, to separate them yet they both mean the same thing except obviously he's a junior minister um he he met the firm which has been carrying out surveys of over the number of years uh, the last tests on the empress of britain was carried out using a 3d acoustic survey in may of last year they surveyed 12 vessels in 20 in 2018 and they're now concentrating on this vessel and are quite confident having carried out the surveys that there is gold inside worth up to a billion euro um, i don't know why there's a nugget there but Let's have a look. Because of the location, uh, they don't have to bring the vessel into the Irish shore, uh, into Irish shores. If they do, then the appropriate legislation means that the state will automatically get seven and a half percent levy. But he added, the company are telling me, uh, obviously that's the fellow there. He says that, that they'll be adding a lesser percentage if it's going to be going into Ireland. The spokeswoman of the Department of Transport um, has already made, been made aware of the operation and as yet has, has not been possible to confirm the nature or the extent of the matter. Um, doesn't sound like they quite know what's going on, but um, that's interesting. The department, together with other responsible departments and agencies, is keeping this issue under the review. And that's pretty much it, really. And then if we go into, this is Wikipedia, the RMS Empress of Britain, dated 1930. Um, I'll put all the details in the description there for all the um, all the sites you want to go to. It says, um, was an ocean liner built uh, between 1928 and 1931. Again, it was built in a shipyard in Scotland, owned by the Canadian 
Pacific Steamship Company. Uh, Rob Random says, 500 meters, um, hold my beer. I don't know about hold your beer. What about holding your breath? Uh, Comics like this says, gold, it's 750 now. Uh, got to fill me air tank and go for a dip. <laughs> 500 meters, um, <laughs> that, 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 that's definitely some depth. Wonder if uh, if we can extend our territory areas after Brexit. Yeah, I wonder too, uh, Rob. <laughs> Um, let's have a look here. Provided the transatlantic passenger service between Canada and Europe, obviously from 1931 to 39. Um, it says here, in her time, the Empress of Britain was the largest, fastest, and most luxurious ship between England and Canada. She was torpedoed, which the funniest they don't mention in the uh, in the news articles. They just say it was it was bombed. Um, and then I think the one did say it was torpedoed, but the other one didn't say it was torpedoed. Very odd. Uh, so it's torpedoed in 1940, but it does mention the U-boats here, which is U-32, and then and that's what it looks like. Uh, Nazi Germany's Creek uh, Creek Marine during World War Two. Um, obviously, it's got its weight. Uh, it was a liner lost during the Second World War. It was the largest ship sunk by U-boats. Uh, there's a bit of history. I won't go too much into that. Uh, there's the. Uh, details of it there it says fate torpedoed and sunk on the 28th 28th of october 1940 by a german u-boat it's got the builder there clyde bank in scotland john brown and company southampton to quebec obviously peacetime commercial services and if we go here sinking um, okay it actually mentions a specific bomber here as well that's interesting the focke wolf fw 200 condor was a bomb there apparently um did the hit on that it's a long range bomber okay it's funny there's a stealth bomber there um i'm just going to see if there's any other mention of it's got u32 commanded by hans hans yenish he fired two torpedoes at it the first one uh, uh, the first detonated prematurely but hit the second hit causing a massive explosion I wonder if in the explosion, though, if the, some of the uh, uh, some of the gold are being dispersed. I reckon that would be quite interesting. Hey, Yankee, how are you doing? Hey, when did we go scuba diving, Lamy? Well, t I tell you what, if that uh, if there's a million, if sorry, if there's a billion euros worth of gold, maybe we should head to uh, Donegal when you come over. Get my get my scuba gear. Common sense and nonsense. How are you doing, uh, John? <laughs> John O'Koof. That's what I said, Yankee. It would be scraps. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe when it was torpedoed, uh, some of the uh, the gold had sort of flown out of the uh, of the hole from the explosion. So I wonder if there's a scattering treasure lying all the way around there until eventually it was um, until eventually it sank. So it says here the tug slipped. Um, oh, so they obviously did try to tow it. Began filling with water. The tug slipped tow tow lines. That was probably after the initial bomb uh, bombing of the actual site. Uh, in fact, there's a check that out. There's an old, there's some old photos of the bombing of the ship. Wow, interesting. Uh, which impact the duck? So we actually did three torpedo hits on it, and that was that. And, okay, mentioned it, gold salvage. Appalachian Stackens here. Hey, Silver Lamy at work, just stopping in for a smash. Absolutely, this isn't going to be a long live stream anyway. I just thought I'd, I found this article and uh, no one's covered it. So I thought, well, considering the vast amount of gold on this, reputedly on the ship, I thought I'd better get in there. And it's just off the coast of Ireland as well, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so it says gold and salvage. It says it was suspected that she had been carrying gold. The United Kingdom was at that time attempting to ship gold to North America in order to improve its credit. South Africa was gold uh, was the gold producer of the British Empire at that stage, and the Empress of Britain was recently birthed in Cape Town. Most of the consignments of gold were transported from Cape Town to Sydney, Australia, and from there to America. Uh, there were not enough uh, suitable ships, and gold was frequently held in in Sydney. It is possible that as a result of this delay, the Empress of Britain was transporting gold from South Africa to England where um, it could then be moved uh, to the United States of America. On, on the 8th of January, 1949, uh, the, uh, the Daily Mail reported uh, that uh, a salvage attempt 
was made in the summer of that year. So in 1949, they'd attempted, which means that there was definitely something on there. Uh, Black Steel, Ms. Misman, how are you doing? Thank you very much for dropping in. Speg, uh, Spectacular is asking you a question there, David. Ah, oh, see, I'm still drinking coffee. I've got a bit of tea here. Right, sorry, getting back to this. It says the Daily Mail reported that a salvage attempt was made in the summer of that year, in 1949. Uh, there were no follow-ups and the story contained errors. Hmm, interesting. 1985, the potential salvager received a letter from the Department of Transport Policy Unit saying the gold on board had been recovered. Okay, that's interesting because they're stating here that the gold on board had been recovered, yet they're now sparking interest to go out there and, and find the gold again. So in 1995, Salvagers found the Empress of Britain upside down in 500 feet of water. Using saturation diving, they found uh, that the fire had destroyed most of the decks. So obviously, don't forget, probably the decks were made of wood at, uh, at that stage. So they had the main, the main infrastructure, and then the wooden decks would have been put down, so all of that would have gone up in smoke, literally. Um, leaving a largely empty shell uh, rising from the sea floor. Uh, the bullion room was still intact. Inside was a skeleton, but no gold. That's interesting. Um, Spe Spectacular says, uh, we want some entertainment. Pull up your computer's history. Let us check it out. <laughs> Silver Wolverine, how you doing, buddy? Did you, uh, did you check out that? Um, I saw your comment there on that um, on the community post that I put. But um, I think um, Precious Metals are, are going to have a bit of a shine coming uh coming soon i just thought that article was uh was relevant in regards to all of us but thanks for thanks for checking it out i'll put some uh community posts in my community section so if you go to my home page go to the community section you'll see there's a couple of interesting articles that come across uh, definitely check that out um okay so it is suspected the goal was unloaded when the empress of britain was on fire and the passengers evacuated the body inside the bullion room may not have may not have been someone involved in the salvage uh, may have been uh, someone involved in the salvage okay so that might have been the first one in 1949 but anyway um I, th I thought that was interesting in regards to the way the article has been put that there is gold on this wreck but then when you go to wikipedia for instance it says there were some reported that say some of the gold was recovered but maybe they didn't recover the gold and they're just making it say that oh, no, uh, everything has been recovered and people are going to waste their time. But then the uh, the salvage company out, out there now have done uh, have done some surveys of the area and they're pretty adamant that the gold's there. Um, so it's all it sounds like speculation currently at the minute. Um, but um, I thought it was interesting. I thought I'd share it with you. Let's see if there's another article in regards to that gold uh, gold empress. Of Britain. There it is again. That was five days ago. There was another article there posted, and that was the. Is that five days ago? Okay, so that was Irish Central News, and there's the. Uh, uh, God, I hate these pop-ups. Oh, geez, we're up to fourteen. Thanks very much, guys. Really appreciate you guys dropping in. Smash that like. Thanks, there, Yankee. How are you doing today? You well? David Carlyle is a new video. Eureka! Gold at last. Um, anyway, here we go. And uh, obviously the Empress, uh, the Empress of Britain has laid at the bottom of the of the sea off the Irish coast since 1940. Uh, we're gonna, there's some more detailed images there. We've got King George the Sixth um, with the the Queen, Lady Elizabeth. Uh, constant irritating pop-ups. Um, that's Elizabeth Bowles. Uh, the ship's uh, the ship was sunk in 1940. Let's see if there's anything more. Oh, yeah, apparently there's an interactive map here that shows locations of 4,000 shipwrecks around Ireland. That would definitely be worth a look. So Wolverine, uh, Silver Limey 79. The guy in your post, Peter Schiff, is a gold dealer. He wants to he wants to sell you gold. <laughs> Little biased. Okay, well, that was the news. Uh, that was Kitco News, and they were obviously chatting to him. So it certainly sounded uh, pretty genuine. But um, 
I like your response though. The guy's like Bernie Sanders. I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> there we go. Rob Rob Random says, no way would the government leave gold out there if they had any chance of getting it off. Even before passengers. Life is cheap. Gold isn't. That is very true. Uh coin sense and nonsense virus alert. Be sure to click all the links you see. <laughs> Um, I'm going to just try and see if there's anything else. Uh, okay, that's the big um, exploration vessel that's there. Oh, there's the Empress of Britain. There's a thing on, uh, what's that, uh, Parthe, British Parthe. I don't know if you guys have ever checked that out. We've got these old, um, old videos. I don't mind watching them every now and then. But um, that seems to be about it. Do you guys have any questions? I can look this stuff up if you like. So Irish inliner. I'm going to try and see if there's general news. Let's have a look there. Health babe. Just saw your notification. Stop by to say hi. Thank you very much for stopping by and saying hello. Really appreciate it. This isn't going to be a long stream anyway. I was just a news article that I came I came across and I wanted to show it to everybody because it's in, it's not it's it's very rare to find a news article in, in the country that you live <laughs> that is this prominence in regards to precious metals. So I was like, yeah, well, this is something that uh, that is literally just just off the sh off the off the coastline. Wow, I thought that was really impressive. It says um, here we are, survivors' tales. Let's have a look at that. Survivors' tales. In regards to the sinking of the Empress of Britain, wow, well, there it is again. It's a beautiful view. That's the uh, how much for there? The De Havilland uh, seaplanes, something like that. Um, oh, goodness me, he's flipping things. The night she was struck, she had apparently eight hundred, sorry, six hundred ninety-three passengers on board. Ah, want to read more? What? Ah, don't you just hate that? Actually, everybody wants you to subscribe or flip and click or, you know, to, ah, it just sucks. Want to listen to some elegant British accent as well. <laughs> John RMS, how are you doing, John? If Lamy disappears, it means uh, he found a lot of gold and he's, say, he's staying on the low. <laughs> staying down low. <laughs> Uh, how's everyone's work day actually well, yesterday was a was a public holiday actually um here in ireland no oh, what we refer to as a bank holiday so um yeah well, yesterday was nice we sort of just had just uh, just had the day off stormy seas oh apparently the uh the uh, exploration team's trying to get the Irish government to change the uh, the law in regards to them using Donegal to obviously transport the gold to their uh, to that that um, uh, the harbour. Otherwise, the moment it lands, they're going to hit it with a seven and a half percent fee. It's interesting. Another, uh, you know, honestly, these articles. There's three different articles, and they all vary in some aspect. Work days are headaches since I have uh, have to deal with lots of geniuses. It almost looks like Guinnesses the way you the way you wrote that, but yeah, you you got to bang on uh, geniuses. <laughs> to me, it looks like Guinness. Uh, Robbie Nashner says, "I'm in my car now, heading to Donegal. Are you are you coming? I'll pick you up on the way." <laughs> uh, have you got any? Uh, do you have any scuba gear with you? <laughs> Homebrew is here as well. Hey, the homebrew, you well? Thanks for uh, thanks for dropping in. I'd rather, I'd rather do with the beer instead. Yeah, absolutely. Silver Wolverine, Silver Seventy Nine. Of course, it's a holiday. Trump's in town. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I thought that might have been. Uh, a worthy mention. Has anyone got any plans? Uh, is anyone going to be coming over to Ireland at some point? 
Um, it'd certainly be great to meet up with um, a few more people. Obviously, I met with International Stacker um, a few months back, but um, if any of you are thinking of coming to Ireland, I'd love to meet up for a, uh, for a pint of Guinness. Uh, maybe when you're down this side, Robbie, as well, eh? you might want to stop in. Let me know when you're in, in this area. Uh, Robbie Nash says, says we can buy it on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Need to run no, no problem. Thanks, Health Babe. Take care. Silver Limey, not Silverback. Somebody call me Silverback. Darn, don't look correct. Oh, no, no problem there, Coinsen. So, um, how are you doing, man? I've got to I'll head over to your to your channel shortly as well. Just see if um, for some reason I've got channels there that I've got notifications clicked on, and. Um, the notifications aren't coming through and then when i go there there's three or four videos up does that happen with everybody i just it just really irritates me have a great day uh silver bag 79 and everyone's got to run okay cheers uh coin sense and nonsense i did by mistake michael are you well michael he's the uh the winner of my 1k go he just he just got the space red uh germania the other day uh, how you doing, Michael? Thanks very much for stopping in. Before I go, I always want to ask you a question about your name with uh, Limey. Are you former Royal Navy? Um, uh, no. I always use that term Limey. I just like uh, I, I like the sound of it, and it has a historical reference to it. Um, but uh, no, I wasn't in the Royal Marines. I have the same issue. Yeah, there you go. Common sense nonsense. Notifications has an invisible cap. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you, you sort of go into everybody's and then click it as well. But also, have you noticed when you do um, a channel search, it, it might show you like all oh, that you're you're not subscribed, but then when you go in there, you actually are subscribed. It's like these funny little quirks in regards to what YouTube does. I find it very irritating. Uh, John says, no, oh, yeah, that we've gone that one. Cheers, coin sense, coin sense and nonsense. Uh, I'm very good, thanks. Uh, beautiful coin, thanks again. Absolute pleasure, uh, Michael, and congratulations. Um, Health Babe says, I see it has history with scurvy. Yes, that's right. Um, at, at that stage, the Royal Navy, they, uh, they prescribed sugar and lime juice to the British sailors, and that pretty much sorted the scurvy out relatively quickly. So all the foreign... Uh, all the foreign navies and that that were called them lime juices because of uh, because they would be drinking lime or eating limes and um, they got the nickname and then that sort of lime juice uh, then it got turned into limey so yeah <laughs> I just thought that it's 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 for me it's just a, a very interesting uh, sort of nickname or slang name for an Englishman <laughs> Anyway, um, thanks very much for stopping in. Uh, unless anyone has any other questions, this this was just to share this brief um, thing about this gold here. I'll post more of it once we know more. Um, Hathbase says, "Right on. Thanks for thanks for your confirmation." And that's what I have learned to. <laughs> it's very interesting. Have you guys checked out the? I did the the quiz for some of you that uh, that didn't make it. I had fifty questions based on on coinage. And it was a lot of people learned a lot. So if you guys want to do, you want to check out the questions I put there, definitely worth a look. I'd say I think a lot of people were quite surprised in regards to the content of questions. They weren't easy. I mean, not that I'm, I was going to make it easy, but um, there was a lot of interesting knowledge in regards to US coins, some British coins, and we also looked at some Canadian coins. Um, but um, if you guys haven't checked the video out, head over there, go check it out. Uh, definitely worth a look. Full push medals. How you doing, full push? You well? Thanks very much for dropping in here. I'm going to be closing off shortly. But you're welcome to check the um, the playback there. It was a very interesting shipwreck. that um, It was, it was uh, torpedoed off the coast of uh, Donegal, which is in northwest of uh, northwest of Ireland. And um, it's a, reputedly had some gold. I wouldn't say some gold, but a substantial amount of gold on it, which was on its way to America. Um, at that stage to uh, deposit 
and it got uh, initially got at first got bombed by a plane and then it got torpedoed. Uh, but I just wanted to make everyone aware of it because it's just off the coast here. Is the Australians that call you limeys? Uh, funny enough, I've always thought you know it could be the uh, well I've known the Americans to uh, to refer to um, Englishmen as limeys. Um, it could also be Australia. That's correct, and it possibly could also be Kiwis as well. Um, the New Zealanders. Um, it's funny how there's like nicknames for you know. Yes, we might be called Limeys, and then you've got the the Australians called Aussies, and then you've got the New Zealanders called the Kiwis. <laughs> it's like <laughs> this interesting sort of nickname uh, for for the different countries. Um, I don't know about South Africans. Uh, what the South Africans would be called. Um, yeah, I guess uh, say South Southlanders or maybe or something like that. I know uh, in the eight, in the late eighteen hundreds they used to call them Saint Saint Landers, if I remember correctly, Saint Landers. But anyway, um, thanks very much for watching, everyone. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, uh, like and comment down below. I certainly appreciate any feedback you may have. Obviously, you'll need to comment uh, once the video has been fully uploaded. Don't forget the patties. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The Irish and patties, the English limeys. What do you call the Scots? What are the Scots called? Actually, in the Welsh, the Welsh are the, yeah, you got the Welsh who, uh, who are the Celts. No, no, the Celts, the Irish. Yeah, the Welsh, being from Wales. I don't know. That's an interesting one, Robbie. But yeah, the patties being, uh, being Irish. Please hit the like button. Thank you very much. That's interesting because even when even when they refer to Americans, uh, they say Yanks. But New York, does that mean a Yank is uh, from New York or is a Yank representative of the whole country? Because um, obviously if you say the United States of America, it doesn't sound anything like Yank. But I just find that very interesting. I need my Yale's Queen's Beast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, funny enough, I was looking at all my Queen's Beast videos again, and I have just uh, changed the reimages, the uh, the thumbnails, uh, a bit because um, they're beautiful, beautiful coins. And unfortunately, I got them in capsules, and you know when you got them in capsules, it's so much different. Um, taffs, <laughs> taffs and jocks. <laughs> That's interesting, Robbie. <laughs> anyway, thanks, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Um, I'll see you. Uh, oh, hang on. Michael I says Yankees are the North US. Okay. Stephen Heath calls us all Yankees. Yeah, I, I always thought because you got the New York Yankees that anyone referred to as a Yank is from New York as opposed to what, what would you call Americans? Americans are Americans. Uh, is there another nickname for um, the, uh, an American? Um, but I always associated Yankees, but it's interesting. Silver, um, sorry. Michael, Michael I says Yankees are the North US. And what do you call the Southern US? What are they called? Tonto stacking. What's up, everyone? How you doing, Tonto? We're just wrapping up this side. Are you well? Thanks for thanks for dropping in. It was it was only be a quick uh Quick live stream, but I thought I'd share this video with you, or the share the articles uh, with everybody. Quite a substantial amount of gold reputed on the shipwreck. It hasn't been brought up yet, so um, I'll keep you guys posted. It'll certainly be fantastic to see some. Rebels, <laughs> rebels, says David Carla. I mean, obviously, you get the Confederates, but I mean, I don't think they use that sort of talk anymore, do they? No, uh, no, no issue at all there, Tonto. We call the Southerners the ones who lost the war. <laughs> well, funny enough, even in England, they refer to Southerners as the Southern English um, as well, actually, funny enough. So it would be a very much a mutual thing. Uh, but obviously, we wouldn't refer to the Southerners as the ones who lost the war in, the, in, in England. They're just Southerners or just people who live in the South. Uh, Silver Wolverine, uh, Steve Steve Heath also calls American football egg carrying. Right. <laughs> yeah, 
you know, American football to me is, I find the sport very interesting because it's all about strategy. It's like knowing to, you know, try this way, attack that side, attack that side. I think it's very, very interesting. It's an interesting sport. I understand it's it's quite a long sport, but I guess it's more about being tactical and, and planning and knowing where to attack to try and get the try and get the score in, I suppose. Robbie says, great live show, Limey. Look forward to the next one. Take care, everyone. Cheers, Robbie. Thanks very much, my friend. It's always uh, always always good to see you. Same with Silver Wolverine. Michael I, thank you very much for dropping in. David, David Carlisle, Tonto's uh, stacking. Um, we still got a few more people watching in the background. Uh, whoever you are, thank you very much for for dropping in to come and see my live stream. Um, I look forward to any uh, any comments. If you've got any questions afterwards, I'll certainly look it up and I'll get them answered. Michael I says the north is the north of uh, Mason Dixon, uh, sorry, Dixon line by Delaware, Maryland. Oh, okay. The north is north of the Mason Dixon line. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, the the American uh, the American phrase uh, whistle uh, whistling Dixie. What exactly does that mean? Um, just out of interest, if anyone knows out there, whistling Dixie. Thank you. Hope I make it on the next uh, next live video. Yeah. Thanks very much, Tom. So I normally live stream on the weekends, but. Um, I had some time now, and there was an int interesting article here, so I thought I'd uh, put it up there. But um, I don't normally live stream the week, but I thought, why not? If anyone if anyone joins, it's always great. Sorry, just trying to just wait to see if anyone knows that um, whistle whistle Dixie. I don't know if that's an old term. I believe it's something from the Civil War. Uh, might have been a song uh, worth looking up. Uh, okay, cool. Well, look, I'll definitely, uh, I'll, I'll definitely. In fact, let's just have a quick look at that now. Sorry, I'm gonna. I know I keep saying goodbye, and <laughs> I'm still here. Uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna spell this. Oh. Whistle Dixie. Here we go. You whistling Dixie it says, according to American Heritage, uh, whistle Dixley, uh, Dixie is unrealistic, rosy, fantasizing. Uh, okay, that's interesting. There we go. Southern US whistle Dixie. Okay, obviously that's them whistling there. Uh, here you go. Okay, yeah. there we go. There we go. Dixie um, had originated in the minstrel show of the 1850s and quickly became popular throughout the United States. During the American Civil War, it was adopted as a de facto national anthem. Of, there you go. It was the national anthem of the Confederate States of America. Wow, I had no idea. Fancy that. Uh, new versions appeared um, at this time uh, that were more explicit songs to the events of the Civil War. The song was a favorite of President Abraham Lincoln. Um, he had it played at some of his political rallies and an announcement of General Lee's surrender. Uh, the earliest uh, known record of the song was performed by Bill Murray. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Billy, uh, sorry, Billy, Billy Murray in the duets of Ada Jones in 1916. There it is. It says they adopted 1861 and relinquished in 1865. Won't go into too much detail, but there we have it. And on that bombshell, thanks very much for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Take care, everybody.